Welcome to the Three Knockdown Rule. Story, Mario Lopez and Steve Kim. Presented by Hustler Casino and UFC Fight Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, the three knockdown rule is in effect. Steve Kim joined by our co-host, Mr. Mario Lopez. Hey. The show brought to you on UFC Fight Pass. Mario looking extra tanned. Weekend well, in Mexico. Yes, yes. It was a vacation with the family, but anyone who has kids know you need a vacation from the vacation. There were seven kids there. More on that later. <laughs> All right. Well, we got 15 rounds of action. Uh, before we get started, just want to let you know the three knockdown rule is brought to you by the Hustler Casino. It's our favorite <laughs> local L.A. casino and home of the most popular poker live stream in the world. A Southern California staple since the year 2000. And Mario, I heard we have a new sponsor. Yeah, this Orale. is a cool one. Shout out to our sponsor and uh, neighbor right here in Hollywood, California, Oscar Lopez. Orale. No relation. From Scalp Micro LA, Oscar's company is really cool. It offers a unique and innovative hair loss solution for men, which a lot of guys oh. are going through. Fortunately, we're not no, no. yet. Wig's good. Prayers Wig's up. Good. Prayers up right there. But... They're cool because they uh, specialize in scalp micropigmentation known mm. as SMP. So basically, it's sort of like a tattoo of the hairline. I've seen people do it. It looks great. Very Kim. subtle. Well, Very not subtle. only is it subtle, it really, you have to really, I'd be, I've seen it up yeah. close like this and you can't even tell. It's it's really, really good. So they do like these tiny particles into the scalp and it gives the illusion of hair. You can see the results as a little, as after one treatment too. And they create and restore hairline so they can really hook you up, especially if it's not as dense as it once mm. was, right? If you start to thin a little bit. Um, and they also camouflage if you have any sort of skin conditions or burns, which is kind of cool. You know, give people a lot of yeah. insecurities right there. Anyway, Scalp Pro Micro LA uses the highest quality tools for its procedures. So if you're golden bald or just looking for a new look this summer and want to keep the wig tight, hit up our homies over at Scalp Micro LA. And you mentioned this ad for a free consultation. Good luck. I'm telling you, I've seen it in person. It's good. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want like to get involved with the three knockdown rule and sponsor our fine program, we still have slots available. Please reach out to us by emailing info at boxbid.io. Once again, that's info at boxbid.io. Boxbid.io is an online platform that is launching soon that helps public figures and professionals in the world of boxing get sponsorships. We are proudly working with boxbid.io. So let's get started with round number one. Round For the one. Last seven, eight months, boxing fans had a couple of key questions. What would come back or return to the schedule faster? The three knockdown rule with Mario Lopez and Steve Kim or Spence Crawford. Folks, first of all, we beat them to the punch, but there's good news. It's on July 29th at the T-Mobile Arena in Viva Las Vegas for the undisputed welterweight championship of the world on Showtime pay-per-view. Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. You know what that means, right? What's that? You've got to grow your side uh, what What's this? What you're, is this? Oh, they're what, growing. What, what is this? You're losing the Kim Jong-uns and you're getting a side for What is this? No, that's as long as they get. No, 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 this no. Little, I want Luke Perry. Hold on. 90210 style. You think I'm Joe Namath circa 1972? I don't think so. <laughs> We're going to have it a little longer. It's got to get to to mid <sighs> to mid ear. Mid ear. Uh, that I is a great sign. That. <laughs> that's the deal. That was a bet. It is a bet. It's a bet. Um, Listen, that's a good look and so is this fight. I, first of all, I can't believe it, to be quite honest with you. And is it a little late? Uh, it is. I would have liked it two, three years earlier, but it's still not spoiled yet. However, here's the crazy thing. I was actually having a conversation with Bernard Hopkins about this when we went to the Sugar Ray Leonard <laughs> event. Remind me about that later, too. And it's funny because we both thought the same thing. When this was being talked about, what, initially three years ago? About 2018, three? actually. Wow. They had that little run in in Oklahoma wow. City. Oh, wow. That was the big, that's where I was. Okay. That's five, that, years. that's five years. Oh my God, my, I have no frame of reference of time anymore. Five years ago, you asked me, hands down, I'm going Crawford. Easy. Boom. All the way. Like, I just, I, I, I'm a huge fan of his. I'm a huge fan of both. I like both, but I'm really a fan of, of, of Crawford. Aside from being the best ambidextrous fighter I, I think I've seen, some, I forget if he's, if he's a conventional or southpaw. He's so good at adjusting. And he's good at making mid fight adjustments, and he's got a meanness to him, and he knows how to, um, uh, close out the show and just uh, obviously highly skilled. In his, he's got stud okay, kids. Okay, but as there's wrestlers. a but coming. But father time's undefeated. Uh oh. And he is a little older. And I'm not saying my guy has lost any sort of step, but 
there's there's a question mark now, right? So again, you asked me five years ago, I'm 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 saying, oh, bet the house on Crawford. Now after a little time, I'm like, I'm not saying Spence waited as long as he could to let him get a little older, but it does make you pause. And both Hopkins and I, uh, Hopkins and I were like, you know what? Now it's like, mm, it's kind of interesting because we saw that Spence, who was the younger guy, he was able to bounce back from that big accident. Um, he's still a big welterweight, still a southpaw, still got some pop. I think it just makes it more interesting. Gun to head, I'm still leaning towards Crawford, but I don't think it's as slam dunk as it was five years ago. Do you disagree? You know, here's the interesting thing. So Crawford is now 35. Spence is 33, so it's not that big of a difference. Not that it's big, not. but those couple years being a big, you know a guy okay. can get older overnight. You know what I'm saying? Well, since they had that face-to-face in Oklahoma City, it was at an Alex Salcedo fight. That was before the accident that nearly ended the career and almost, well, certainly altered the life of Errol Spence. True. Here is a stat that I think is really interesting. Coming into this bout, Errol Spence will have had more than a 12-month layoff. He last fought April 16th of 2022. And then there's that. So there is it ring rust or is it corrosion? Also, at least Crawford got in about in December against David Avanesian. Look, neither guy has been really active. So I don't think it's that much of a factor. Now, in terms of it, is it perfectly on time? Look, if it was a steak, it would not be rare. may not even be medium rare. But I'd say this fight is well done. And a well done steak can still be a good steak, especially a New York strip. But I digress. The other thing is, is it too late in terms of its commercial? I like your carnivorous analogy. Yes, I went to trainees last week. (laughs) And also in terms of its commercial and historical value. I will say it's still on time. And I'll make this argument. Right now in the Ring Magazine, pound for pound, Crawford is three, Errol Spence is four. So there's no other fight where you can theoretically list top ten guys and have a better fight than this one. They are still undefeated, and they are still considered the number one and two fighters at 147. I agree, and I'm excited for it and can't wait and hope to be there. But let me ask you. Do you think it'll do bigger numbers than Garcia no, Tank? No. See, you didn't even let me finish. You, no. And you know why? Big that's factor a slam that dunk. Is? That's a slam dunk. And, and the timing of that yeah. was good. They were still very young. It was still coming up. Not that these guys are older, but do you understand what but I'm saying? Ryan Gar- and how quick, how quick you were to answer, too. That's very interesting. Uh, I'm bold and decisive. And Ryan Garcia's social media clout cannot be discounted. That is the variable <laughs> that exists in that particular equation. With that said, Crawford Spence, people have wanted it. I think it would have been a missing piece of history. It would have gone right up there with Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bowe never fighting. I'm glad they got this fight done. One other thing, Crawford's lifestyle is much more differently. It's much more disciplined than Spence. You know what? I was going to say that. Well, hence the accident. I believe he was. There was some drinking involved. I don't want to speculate, but I think there was. Um, I never see Spence out of shape, though. I, I, yeah, I've never seen like a heavy. Uh, sp- there, there's some uh, online well, I photos. Really, I, mean, I haven't really seen him get too too heavy because you know you've seen tanks yeah. sometimes get a little heavy between. Uh, if I, I haven't seen um, a Spence like that, but if you say they're out there, I've never seen Crawford out of shape. Yes. Crawford always he stays in that gym because I follow him too on social. Media. He stays in that gym. That there that's a family of athletes right there and fighters too, wrestlers, boxers. So I'm really excited. And again, you know, I I I still lean towards Crawford, but I do think because of the few years that have gone by, it does make it a little closer than originally thought. And last point on this before we move on. The Pacquiao-Mayweather fight in 2015, and you can argue that fight was about three, four years too late. And one guy actually got flattened right on his face. When that fight did over 4 million pay-per-view buys, it taught me a lesson. Pay-per-view and big fights are about recognizability and stars. And even and I, I go back to the rematch between Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns in 1989. That was eight years from the original classic fight. Mm-hmm. And I remember the word back then was, oh, it's too late. Uh, Tommy Hearns was shot. He looked terrible against James Kitchen. But guess what? Commercially, because there was the brand of the hitman and Ray Leonard, it still did well. And Tommy did well. So I don't know <laughs> if this fight does any better two, three years ago than it will in a couple of months. Well, you're talking about the business side of it. Yes. I was talking about from a performance right. side. Well, that's different. That is different. But uh, Spence, to me is a guy that has not been as disciplined, and Crawford is an overall better athlete, but we'll talk about this fight more in the upcoming weeks and months. Uh, we talked about this on our last show, May 20th. Vasil Lomachenko lost a controversial 12-round decision to Devin Haney for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. And now Agus Klimas has sent a letter to all four sanctioning bodies, and this will be part of a broader appeal, to keep them at number one and the mandatory challenger. 
Mario, here's my view of it. All that's well and good, and I certainly feel for Loma and his team. But if Devin Haney does not want to fight, I don't think any of it matters. I can't remember the last time a guy won and lost. It feels, it feels more like a loss than, than winning. And I'm not just talking about in his own hometown when he was getting booed. I'm talking about the response from his, from his uh, colleagues, from his fellow fighters on social media. It's like Loma really did more winning not getting his hand raised in this fight. It's like he got more cla- – I don't know how this is mentally going to do – uh, a number on Haney. Is there a cause for concern? No, because... It's been pretty brutal. All right, but doesn't it remind you a little bit of Canelo Golovkin 1? I, I, and I think there's a difference, too, though, and I'll tell well, you about I, well, it. Well, you know what it reminded me a little bit more of? I was going to... Actually, more Pacquiao-Bradley 1. Mm, good one. That's a little bit more of a fair comparison because Golovkin-Canelo 1, uh, they... I, even though I did feel Golovkin won, I, I, Canelo still being the biggest star in the sport, and there were some close rounds. I don't know. I, I feel like he was still given a little bit of it, more of a benefit of doubt with Haney, not his star, not being as uh, bright. Uh, not as bright. I don't think people. Well, and then and, and mind you, Lomachenko just came home from fighting a war. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was like everything. He had all the positivity in his side. You had that shove from Haney. He didn't have a lot of good mojo going into that fight. And there's a big difference. Canelo Golovkin won did over a million pay-per-view buys. So commercially, both yes. sides, Tom Loeffler and Oscar De La Hoya said, okay. Win-win. Let's cut the pie again. This one did about one-tenth of the buys. Mm. So, like, let's say if this thing would have done 500,000 buys, well, it's a no-brainer. Sure. But the fact it may have not done more than 150,000, business decisions rule the fight decisions. All right, and we'll be back. Fight review, fight preview, but now a word from our sponsors. Catch the streaming live right on YouTube. Right on YouTube. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. $1.2 million. Oh! oh. <laughs> and I'm losing in this fucking game. What the fuck? This is a 400k flip. If I win by way, you get 10 grand. Cover my fucking straddle! For my fans. Wow! <laughs> All in in a call. I'm not fucking leaving. Raise it up. And re- Review preview. Fight pass. Mario Lopez, Steve Kim. Lots of stuff going on this past weekend in the UK from Belfast, Ireland, for the IBF featherweight title. Louis Alberto Lopez, Viva Venado, knocking out Michael Conlon in five. And then from Manchester, England, the new and old WBA featherweight titleist is once again Lee Wood with a rather methodical 12-round decision over Mauricio Lara. Uh, Lopez is the game's latest road warrior. Jeez. Like Glenn Johnson. First of all, in Venado, that name makes me laugh because if people don't know, that is a Spanish for the deer. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, the, that deer's the hunter. Well, that gets yeah. the deer hunter. Venado, yeah, I, I, I don't know why it makes me laugh because it literally just like the deer, which I guess my guy, the irony is that my guy is not like a gazelle in there. Yeah. He's got an awkward, fierce style, but it's it's awkward, sort of like Navarrete's, where it's very effective and he's heavy handed. And he, I love the fact that he's fearless in there. And the this is his second time, correct me if I'm wrong, back to back where he's been going yes. on the road. And the way he stopped him with that beautiful uppercut that he felt like he he was trying to bob and weave, but he caught him a little bit earlier with that same punch and then uh, ended up catching him right on the button. That was all she wrote in the fifth round. I was like, wow, that was a statement win. That was very, very impressive. And Venado, I think, is. is uh, is a serious uh, uh, contender now in in this weight class. Made a lot of buzz, and the fact that you can do it crossing the pond over there, I was like, wow, bravo! You want to see him fight again? And I think he's a real player. There's a Emmanuel Navarrete like feel to him. He does mm-hmm. a lot of things, maybe not textbook, not fundamentally sound, but it works for him. It works for him because he's got a <laughs> wide punching frame. Right, he's kind of loose. He's not someone that you'd want to emulate. But there's obvious power and there's guts. Look, he's got a belt now, and top rank is his promoter. You could do a unification bout with Robezi Ramirez, and there's also solid young contenders like a Ruben Villa, who looked mm. very good in his last fight, yeah. or an old old standby war horse like Joette Gonzalez. He's going to make a lot of fun fights. And you know what? He's not going back to the fearlessness. He was smiling in there yeah. like he knew he had it. And 
he's a very confident guy. And a confident guy with an awkward style, with heavy hands, that's a dangerous man. Yeah, and Mario, this is interesting. And the Mauricio Lara was told by the British Boxing Board of Control a day or two before the fight, hey, you're too heavy in the pre-fight weigh-in, so now you can no longer weigh in at 126, mm. and you can't win the title. I, I don't understand this because, Mario, in a lot of cases, fighters nowadays are doing the hyperhydration or a version of it where they're losing 10 to 12 pounds before the night of the weigh-in and then sleeping off the other pound. So be wary. If you're going to go to the U.K., they have a different set of rules. They don't even let you use the sauna at mm. all. My view That's is this. Mr. Mayhem was really listless. It looked like a guy who was completely dispirited. And Lee Wood, congratulations to him, but I don't know. I, I there's something about that was very, I don't want to say fishy, but off. Well, it 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 was very methodical and he was disciplined in there, but I didn't know if it was a combination of him being off, him being just sort of guarded, because he got um he got uh, KO'd the last time, but he it, it he he di he did what he needed to do in a very I don't want to say boring manner, but in a not exciting yeah, fashion. It was what it was. It was what it was. But he ended up winning, I guess. It sort of lived to fight another day. Um, what did George Benton once say? Hey, kid, uh, win tonight, look, look good, good tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, that's, and that, that, that's exactly it. I, very different from the fight we just discussed. I tell you, kid, that looked good on Saturday night. Uh, Rocha. Rocha. Oh, no, Alexis Rocha. I've seen him a couple times now. He's an exciting guy. He He's moves, looking good. Moves to 23 and 1, 15 knockouts, uh, stopping Anthony Young in five rounds. This is a stat. This is it since March of 2022. This, that was his fifth fight. Say it with me, everybody. Activity, Activity matters. matters. No, he stayed busy. That was another thing. He looked really sharp. He's got a lot of confidence in there. S uh, scrappy, but I don't want to dismiss his style by just saying scrappy. Speed to him. He's got some speed, a little quick twitch, and he's got a little pop in his punches. I know uh, De La Hoya and the guys at Golden Bar are very excited about him, and he's calling out big names. Look, he wants the winner of Spence. Crawford, I know he's just throwing up, uh, throwing him out there, but I think he would he would actually want to really actually tussle with those guys. Mario, he's 25 years old. He's 23 and one. One loss to a very quick, speedy Rashidi Ellis. I'd love to see that rematch. I don't know if that's possible. Here's the thing, though. He's had two fights at the first half of 2023. I told Hector Lopez, his manager trainer, look. I think Crawford Spence, which has a rematch clause, which goes right. both ways, yeah, we didn't talk that about could that. be right. a best of three. Sure. So you may have to get in line, get active. I'd ask Golden Boy for two more fights and stick in for this year. Come 2024, this kid's going to be ready for some heavy lifting at 147. And he's raising his awareness level, too, because now people are starting to talk about him. And once they start talking about you, you're popular, everybody's money goes up. And he sells some tickets out yeah. with the Orange County yeah, Faithful. Yeah, we saw him at YouTube, remember? Yes, YouTube Theater. Also, WBO minimum weight title, Oscar Colazzo, Wepa, hey, with a Rico. KO in seven over Marvin Jerusalem, becoming the fastest Puerto Rican ever to win a world title. Pretty Mario, impressive. this Puerto Rican is a world win. Yeah, no, they're very excited about him over there at Golden Boy, too. So they've got a nice little stable that they're growing. But, yeah, that was, they had a nice weekend of fights. Yes, yes, they did. And also, moving ahead, uh, Saturday on The Zone from Detroit, Michigan, Women's Middleweight Championship of the World. Clarissa Shields takes on Maricela Cornejo. And then from Miami, Florida, uh, <laughs> brought to you by Don King, <laughs> only in America, oh Adrian Broner takes on Bill Hutchinson. Now, Mario, I got a Dude, question. that's tripping me out. That, that. First of all, Don King is still alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Only in America. No. <laughs> Hello. Dude, is he, is he still alive? Well, my guy's in his 90s, right? Well, same age as Bob Arum. So what is that, 92? 92. 93. 93. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's up there, man. Clint Eastwood just turned 93, too. Look at these guys. That's it. You know what? I'm not getting inspired. I like that. I have a crazy idea. Now, Oscar De La Hoya, and we'll talk about him later, said, hey, look, we're going to meet with Ryan Garcia's management. We're going to have like four options for mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. Look, the guy made a lot of money. You know what would actually be kind of a fight that I would love and the buildup would be a lot of fun? Ryan Garcia versus Broner. Is that the worst idea I've ever had? And I've had a lot it of is, bad ones. It is a bad idea. <laughs> the, four names, the four names he should go with are Romero, 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 and Romero. I, why mess around? I even told Oscar, I go, bro. Because Ryan might have his own set of ideas, but I said, why, you, you have so much more cachet and pull if you have a title. Okay, I have a question for you. Do the, you disagree with that next? I do not, but the WBA did rule that O'Hara Davies, a young man out of the UK, he is the mandatory. So my question is this. If Romero gets stripped, do you still do that fight? Does it matter to you? No, it does matter. The belt does matter in oh, that sense. So that kind of kiboshes well, things. It, it, well, it does, but there's ways around that. And news moving and on notes. to some news and notes. A lot of things being brandied about there, Mr. Lopez. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm coming or going here. 
Tyson Fury said, we are making an offer to Anthony Joshua for September in Wembley. Okay, and then all of a sudden now. Eddie Hearn's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. minute. Uh, We're we're kind of focusing in on Deontay Wilder. Yeah. All right, who's zooming who? I know. Who's zooming who? Is that I, who? I've been seeing Deontay Wilder train over at uh, Brickhouse Boxing oh, Club, which I'm, as I'm rocking the shirt. Good friend uh, of, uh, of ours, Malik Scott. Yeah. Hello, Malik. How you doing? Yeah. So they, I know they've got some fighters over there. Somebody, uh, the Scrappy fought over the weekend, mm-hmm. too, in a very close fight uh, there. So there's some there's some action. But Deontay looks like he's been staying in shape and training for something. And, I, you know, to be honest with you, I think I'd rather see Deontay Joshua. Really? Yes, because I'm still Now, upset. that's a fight that's four years too late. Honestly. Yeah, but it's still with heavyweight, so I think yeah. you have a little more wiggle room to want still want to see it. And I I'd still rather see that because I want to see Fury face Usyk. I know you're a big fan of Tyson Fury. Does he have a credibility problem right now? Because every time he says something, it's like I don't know what to believe. I know that's and it's unfortunate because you know a, a Fury gets in there, he has no fear of it really. He hasn't shown any fear of any man. He's I think the best heavyweight out there by a long shot. So, but I don't know what what is if there is something going on behind the scenes we're not aware of. But it seems unnecessary. I asked Bob Arum in Vegas a couple weeks ago when I'm out there for Haney Loma. Bob, what do you know? What's the latest with Fury? And he gave me this exasperated, well, I don't know. I don't know. You better. So I don't know whether he's coming or going. Let's hope something works out. Also, yeah. uh, speaking of the heavyweight champion, the man that has the three belts, Alexander Usyk, his company with uh, Alexander Krosek, Won the purse bit, so he'll be fighting Daniel Dubois, one of his mandatories, August 12th in Poland. Mm. And then Arter Betterbiev, the human wrecking ball, will be taking on Calm Smith, August 19th in Quebec City. I'm bothered by that. Why? Because I want to see him fight Bivol, and he's not getting any younger. And how old is Betterbiev now? Late 30s. <laughs> exactly. Here's a question. You beat me to the punch there. Dimitri Bivol had a good 2022. He was the fighter of the year. Mario, we are now on the precipice, big word, of June. He has not fought. In fact, his last fight was the first Saturday of November. I'm sorry. I know you want to wait around for Canelo. I'm getting some 411 intel. Canelo has other plans. Smart for Canelo. Okay, so where does that leave B-ball? Bolivian? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, look, and he had made it clear that he wants to unify and be undisputed and so i was getting really excited i told you that's the one fight i was looking forward to yes um right next to uh, crawford spence is better be ev and bivol and the fact that when i saw bivol or pardon me better be ev um but or, this or, is a mandatory though keep no, this in mind i understand mind. but it still made me go ah oh, because he's gonna be even that much older when he fights uh bivol now granted he's a disciplined guy leaves a clean lifestyle but but still i'm more i don't want something to interrupt that i don't want to get that fight Three years too late. No, and the issue is, and with B-Ball, everything about B-Ball coming into this year was focusing in on, hopefully we get Canelo, or maybe we get Canelo. Wait a minute, what happened to your career? What, what happened to just saying, no, 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 no. We're not going to wait on for anybody. Do what you want in September. You've had eight months, basically, to come up with your own plan for something in between. The only reason I give him a bit of I a just... hall pass is because it is Canelo, and the purse is much more significant. It is. I get it. So but if it's w- anyone outside of a Canelo, no, literally the number one guy on the spot, then I'd be like, no, no, okay, no. then I would agree Mario, with you. I do not disagree. I'm and about- Canelo's been also sort of teasing him. We want B-ball next. We want B-ball next. Right, right, right. But, so, you, but Mario, here's my counterpoint. You can kind of see what he's in, his thinking. My counterpoint is you knew in May, Cinco de Mayo, you weren't going to get it. It was always the plan for September. So my view is you've had six months to do something in the first half of the year and now it looks like to me, if you look by the business and the way it goes, B-Ball may have one fight this year. Oh, see. see that's my point. I, you don't think if – when is uh, Better BF scheduled to fight? Uh, August 19th, Quebec if, City. If for some reason he ends that in a quick fashion, which is very possible, you don't think it's too soon to turn around and him to fight in November against B-Ball? Oh, I, I, I would hope so. So that's my that's – Time my, waits for no man. Yeah, and much like we were discussing Spence and Crawford earlier, and I like Better BF – Big when that first fight, when that fight was sort of kind of being bandied about. Has that gap closed? As time goes on, it does. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, time goes on, it does. That's what I'm saying. The last fight or two with Better Biev, I've seen a, I would say, a subtle loss of reflexes and quickness in terms of reaction time. Now, Joe Smith went right into the belly of the beast, paid the price. But B-Ball has an in-and-out, quick-hitting style, master fencer. I'm just telling you, when you have a loss of reflexes and speed against that style— 
it just opens up everything. His power didn't go away, though. No, it doesn't. And he knows how to cut off that ring. Ashka Govidzik. The nail. The nail. Who got nailed. Exactly. All right. Well, we come back on the three knockdown rule on UFC Fight Pass. But first, a word from our sponsor. Here on the three knockdown rule on UFC Fight Pass. Now we return. Oh, yes. People have been eagerly awaiting this return of the Ask Mario segment. Oh, hit Let's me. get right into huh. this. This is from Matt Matt. Uh, hey, guys, which fight do you want to happen more in the near future? Bivol Betterbev, Canelo Benavidez, Usyk Fury, and Ooh. rank them one to three. Ooh, well, those are, those are my top three. Yes. For sure. You know, commercially, well, Canelo Benavides is number one. Of course. That's the one that's going to do the most business. Um, well, you're asking me just as a fan, yeah, but, or what but, do I but, think is going to be more business? What's going to do more business? Because that's, yeah. that's a different answer. Give the Lopez list. Not business. Yes. I'm just talking just because I want to see. Mm -hmm. um, damn it. I still would probably want to see Canelo uh, Benavides number one. One A, though, better be B ball. And those could be interchangeable, to be honest. But, by the way, at 168. We're talking yes. Canelo Day. And then the third one. Usyk Fury. Yeah, Usyk Fury. Isn't that weird? The heavyweight is the yeah. third one. Well, they put it off. It's <laughs> off-putting. I know, I know. Here's a question from Derek Batista. Hey, Stephen Mario, what are your thoughts on a four-man junior welterweight tournament? Subaru Matias versus Jack Catterall. Regis versus Devin Haney. Who is the last man standing? I've always liked the idea of tournaments, but they're hard to to execute something always happens a cut or somebody yeah. uh they just uh, take too long they, injured, they, get, they get yeah someone has a quick KO, then someone uh is in a war can't go it, it does it takes too long so it sounds good in theory but hypothetically speaking um regis yeah you know what though catterall look good catterall is a crafty catterall little look guy good man and catterall good. i still still thought beat taylor so i'm not counting him out exactly i'm not super real matthias is a meat grinder mm -hmm. but I just wonder if Catterall can hold him off. But if you ask me, Steve, gun to head, who's the best 140-pounder, who's the most rugged, technically sound, all-around fighter? Rougarou. Hmm. I think it's Rougarou. I, and, and not Taylor. And Haney, to me, look, I just – here's the thing with Taylor. We he have has to not see. fought I know. in about 16 or 15 months, and that last fight he looked terrible. Well, that's why it's very interesting with the Teofimo fight right. because of his the antics and what's going on. And again, if he can sort of dial back that clock and go to that Loma place and he gets the tailor that faced Catterall, he's got a good shot. Yes, he does. And here's one from the Masses Mint. Uh, there's been talk if Crawford beats Spence, he'll move up in weight to 154 and challenge Jermel Charlo. Mm -hmm. I like Crawford a lot. Isn't that biting off a more than he can chew? It, wouldn't that be too much of a size and strength advantage for Charlo? Hey, glad the show is back. Oh, thank you very much for listening to the show. Appreciate it. And I say no. Yes, Crawford did make his bones at 140, but if you ever stood next to him, my guy's got some big hands. He's got some big hands, and he is strong. He's a strong guy, and I think he's looked great at welterweight, and I actually think against uh, Charlo, um, I would favor him. What? I would favor what? Crawford. So let me get this straight. Spence is too big and strong. No, 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 no. Charlo. I didn't say he was too big and strong. The southpaw thing is, is okay. he's big and strong, but the southpaw thing I think is a that big difference. That can be taken away by Crawford. He switches. No, I know he does, <laughs> but I'm just saying, but for I don't, I, you put Charlo at Spence's level? Technically, overall, no. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think Bud figures him out a little sooner. Here's another thing that kind of concerns I'm not saying me. it's going to be easy. Oh. Granted, and I like Charlo. But I'm just saying, I, Bud's a strong guy, dude. Well, I have Did a you question. see when he picked up that weight and just uh, that when he was deadlift and just like nothing? I forgot how much was it. There was a bunch of plates there. I'm like, oh, that fool. How much? Yeah, it was like 500 pounds, just deadlift. Like, yeah, exactly. Tino's That's three times his body weight. Bro, but like nothing in That's jeans. Insane. In jeans. And just like, just squatted. Like, oh, that fool's strong. He's got that country strength. That Nebraska, he's from Nebraska. He must have been cutting down a lot of corn because he's that fool's strong. By the way, I have a question. When is Jermel Charlo fighting? You know, it's been 
a year and two weeks since he fought Brian Castaño in his rematch. Oh, man. Where's he been? Yeah. Rust don't sleep. He looked good in that fight. The second yes. one. The first yes. one I still thought Castaño got, but the second one he did look good. Agreed. Here's one from Greedy Belly. Ask that Latinx who celebrates Colonizer's holiday, <laughs> Mario Lopez. Number one. I like that fool. Was <laughs> Roly versus Barroso more of an egregious stoppage than Chavez versus so Taylor? Stupid, so you know, it's right, it's right up there. Even, I liked you, and then you came out with one some garbage one like that. One oh, and one A from Richard S-T-E. A L and here's a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do we even exactly care about before? <laughs> do we even care about Francis Ngannou's career since he won't fight MMA until 2024 per his new deal? There's a career whose momentum has just stopped. Talk about going to Bolivian. And look, on paper it looks good. He's getting a piece of the company. He gets so much revenue for certain fighters he brings in and his purse is guaranteed to serve. But it, for, it, it's going to be a while till we see him, and he's going to be coming off that knee injury. We don't know um, yes, how he's going to be after about that. that. Remember, he had a bit, he had a serious knee injury, and it's just so uh, it's such a disappointment because you wanted to see him against John Jones uh, in in the UFC, and Dana offered him more money than he would have ever made before. I think people got in his ear and they started sort of blowing his head, blowing up. his head up, and then it it uh, which by the way. I actually gave him a really good shot because his wrestling actually didn't look too bad against Gane, and he's so strong. Um, I think he would have had a really good shot to beat uh, at beating Jones and would have actually favored him, but now we're never going to know, and yeah. it's so unfortunate. So it's that's so going to be the UFC MMA version of Riddick Bo Lennox Lewis. I was trying to think of an example, <laughs> that's and that's it. exactly it. That's exactly it. Here's one from Joel, and this is tough. This is like picking out our favorite child or flavor of ice cream. Who's your favorite fighter out of Morales? Barrera and Marquez. Ooh, God. I liked all three of them, but I'm going to tell you, um, but it's easy actually for me. Eric Morales, El Terrible, number one. Really? I'm going to tell you why. Well, he's from Tijuana, which Orale. is a neighboring city Orale. where I grew up in Chula Vista. But also because Morales was like a fighter's fighter. He was fundamentally sound, very technical, but he loved to throw chingazos. And he did a beautiful blend of both. He could be... He could be technical when when he wanted to and use his skill, and then he can go out there and let him fly a la all the Barrera fights. And his pride and passion, he would go back and forth with both. Which he would, give me a boring Morales fight. There wasn't. No, wasn't. he was always in exciting fights. He was a great fighter, Hall of Fame fighter. Had so, rivalries. Ex had rivalries. So beat Pacquiao in his prime. First one. Yes, he did. <laughs> Remember that? The I only just, one of those guys. I just love the, the fact in the twelfth he said, "Orale, cabron, I'll go southpaw." Yeah. He's a no. He's a bad dude. Gave Danny Garcia all he could when he was an old man. The first fight. Remember yeah. that first fight? Busted his nose. Um. So Morales number one, easy for me. And then I'm going Marquez. Oh, but mainly, over Barrera. Yes, over Ooh. Barrera. Maybe because it was a rivalry, but over Barrera. And I like Marquez, um, specifically towards the second half of his career even more because he was so fundamentally sound. He almost made it look boring in his first half, but before when he started to plant his feet a little bit more. And let his hands fly a little bit more. Incredibly exciting. But one, I love me some Juan Manuel. That was one of my dogs, Juan Manuel Marquez. And then and then I would go Barrera. You know, Marquez for years was thought of as the boring Mexican musketeer, which mm -hmm. was a little bit unfair, but he was the classic Nacho Berestein counterpuncher. My favorite out of the three, and I think some of it had to do with the fact that he, he was reared by forum boxing alongside Marquez, is Barrera. I, well, that Kennedy McKinney fight, I love that fight. And I love that. But Kicked you, off boxing after dark. You, would you say Barrera had more of an exciting career than Morales? At times he did. Think about it. No, at times. No, I know. I'm saying as a whole. Yeah. I know. Of Kennedy course McKinney, which kicked off boxing after mm -hmm. dark. I think the first Morales-Barrera fight is one of the five best fights I've ever seen. Morales won that one. Uh, okay, according to the judges. Well, he won that one. I thought that, I was, was, a I thought that was a bad oh, decision. come on. Also, come on. What he, did he won the first one. He first faced. He beat Barrera the first time they fight. He beat Pacquiao the first time they fought. You know what? Morales never faced Marquez, and I wish he would. Yeah, that's the that's one. That's the one that I wish that would have that, That's a missing fight. That's a missing fight. But the, what he did against Hamed that but night I love in April. Morales. No, I love that fight. No, I, love, I like all three of them. The Hamed night is one of the most special no, nights that, that I've ever had. Me and Doug Fisher talk about that because we had to drive home that night because there's no hotel rooms. Nobody gave Barrera a shot. They were talking third round knockout, and when he lifted him off the canvas in round one, I said, oh, the, "I've never seen so many British fans go from loud and drunk to just silent." 
one of the most masterful performances. I and loved it, and he was an underdog. And I also judged him by the first time they faced Pacquiao. When Barrera faced Pacquiao in San Antonio, oh. that one time my guy got bludgeoned and got dropped like four or five times. And then we already discussed how Morales faced him. But then the first time Marquez faced him, too, he got dropped, but he came back and managed to draw. So that's why I go, I go Morales, Marquez, Barrera. And, I like all three, but if I had to pick. And finally, from the filthy casual, what's next for Alberto Luis Lopez? Should <laughs> he take casual. a tune-up in preparation for unification bout versus Robesi Ramirez? Or go right back into it and stay to, look, to stay his ass in Europe? so that he can KO another Euro bomb named Lee Wood for what should be great money. Well, Mario, here's the problem. Irish L don't like the Mexicans too much right now. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> Lopez is with top rank. Wood is with, with Eddie Hearn in matchroom. So there's mm. issues there. Sure. And I believe Lee Wood may be fighting Josh Warrington, a battle of fighters from that region that will do big business. Look, I do like him in that fight, though. If you're a fighter and you've paid your dues by punching the passport – and top rank says, look, we're going to start fighting you in L.A., Arizona, Texas, and Mexico, and the money's going to be approximately the same. You know, let's face it. There comes a point in time you want to come back home. Of course. That's just the bottom line. All right, when we wrap it up, we got final flurries. Final flurries. On UFC Fight Pass. want to thank all our fine sponsors of this program. And again, if you'd like to sponsor this show, uh, send an email to info at boxbid.io. Mario, um, we lost one of the great ones last week. Rest in peace to the great Tina Turner passing away at the age of 82. In Zurich, Switzerland. Yeah, she lived, she, she lived she, there for yeah, last 15, 20 years. She married a guy, 16 years her junior. Go ahead, Tina. And uh, I fell in love to a Swiss guy and I guess was battling an illness. And um, what an incredible life because, you know, known for her um, um, with her husband, with Ike Turner. And... Uh, had, had a career with all kinds of great hits, Proud Mary and what have you. And then they had that tumultuous relationship, to say the least, which was documented uh, in What's Love Got to Do yeah. With It. But 1985, I believe, Private Dancer mm. came out. And um, and at that time, she was considered like an older uh, performer, right? Yeah. And then she blew up and was the biggest thing. And you know what? It's funny because I remember that album. And then I also remember Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. We don't need she, another hero. We don't need another hero. Was exactly. Uh, right. Tina she Turner did, yeah. had great chapters and she evolved. And the HBO documentary they did a couple years ago, I thought really yeah. was great. By the way, there's two fighters that great used shape, that. By the way, great shape. Yeah, great legs. Legs. Yeah. All time great legs. But there's two fighters that used. Uh, Simply the best. Chris Eubank and, and Vladimir Klitschko, Klitschko right. use that as their theme slash the yes. walkout music. Bold. Uh, Mario, <laughs> Oscar De La Hoya, you're a good buddy. Friendly, amiable guy, because I've seen him sign autographs for hours. Even I remember him signing autographs for two hours at Caesars Palace near the gift shop after a weigh-in. He's one of the friendliest celebrities you'll meet. Look, super nice, super cool. Don't, but, but don't, but don't, don't come at him on social media, though. Not now. Did you see what happened this weekend? Dude, Ta my guy's had gangster fingers. <laughs> I mean, he's taking shots at fans, and he also took seemed to take a shot at a certain prize fighter that didn't go to his fight, but chumming up to Roly Romero. That was yeah. interesting. What? Yeah, he's cool with everyone. You know what? Because we actually talked about this. It's, you know, both 50, approaching 50. You start to care less. And you're just like, you don't like, you know, you're nice. You're, he's a super cool guy. He super is. nice. Super cool. But like when people will talk uh, smack to you, you start to care less and sometimes you counter back. I'm, I'm sure that guy who tweeted at it wasn't, wasn't ready for that counter punch. That was like a Ricardo Mayorga, <laughs> like the left hook he took in his fight. I mean, when I saw that, I was like, oh boy, Oscar's taking the gloves off. Don't, don't do this I to know. him. It's funny. Do you, do you think Oscar has taken so much in the past by being a nice guy that he feels like, you know what now? No, we're not doing this anymore. I think. I think I don't think he does it all the time. I think he just once in a while. Once, once in a while. while. He once was in the in mood. While. Once in a while, you catch, you know, you catch him, and then uh, somebody comes at him. They're, they're usually idiots, and they don't know what they're talking about. And then you, 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 you Quinn Chick check them, and uh, <laughs> that's it. Uh, Mario, <laughs> the series finale of Succession, what would you think? Oh, Kim, I thought it was a great mm. ending, and I thought it was actually, dare I say, a perfect way to end it. Wow. I'm going to tell you why. Wow. All three kids... The Roy kids deserve their fate. None of them should have gotten the head of that company. Shiv, who's named after... Should have been Shivd. Sh Shiv, named after a, 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 a weapon in prison. Uh, I, I can't believe she did her brothers dirty that way, and then she ended up getting screwed at the end. Um, Roman... Fell apart. Fell, fell apart, apart the late. last kept his episode. was so good for like yes. eight episodes, and then he and fell then apart. And then Kendall, who started to have a solid month, but then he started getting a little bit of a God complex, yeah. got a little too crazy. It was just a matter of time before you thought, 
Okay, he's going to lose it. None of them really deserved it. My man Wamsgan, Greg, came who I was like, Cinderella came out story. of nowhere. No, but what, you know who's great in that, too, was Alan, Alexander Skarsgård, who plays uh, Matson. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, when, when he's talking about his wife, I kind of I kind of want to fuck her. And then uh, Whoa, hey. I think she might, uh, oh, can we bleep these? And I kind of want to F her. And then, uh, um, and I think if given an opportunity, she probably want to F me, too. She goes, so I don't right think. Right to his husband, to the right, husband. Well, he said that, but it was a point. He goes, I don't need that distraction. Yeah. So he goes, well, why don't I get the man that put the baby in her in America? And I was like, dang, cold as ice. And he still, he still took that job. And I was like, I, I was like, bravo, that needed to happen. Do you think Kendall was like contemplating suicide or something? At the end right no, there? but I think he was looking like he said something really. It's true for a lot of people. This is not just what I do. It's what I am. Mm -hmm. And it's a tortured existence. And I, I think it was incredibly well done, that scene where they're in that car and Tom Lit puts out his hand and Shiv touches the hand, but they don't really grasp hands. Well, there's, they've had a little drama. Because it is a marriage of convenience. <laughs> right. And well, now she's pregnant. So I so think that did played into it. Did you see that, Shiv? Did you see her uh, calling that audible? No, that's what made it great. I know, neither did I. I, I, I was like, like, what are you oh, doing, Shiv? She was like, Omaha, I Omaha. I, know. Like, oh, I thought if anyone, Roman might have called it because he was a yeah. little, you know what I mean? But when Shiv, I was like, uh-oh, exactly. And I don't know, do you think she would have called it? Another question. If she didn't, was she betting on herself again because she knew that her husband was now going to be, do you think that had something to do with it? Had her, had um, her husband not said anything, do you think she would have made the same call? I don't know, but I, you know what I think? You know was what I'm saying? Big, yeah, but it was a big factor. She didn't want to be a single mom. I I, I actually, because remember when she, before they got into the plane, she said, do you think we have another chance, Tom? And Tom's yeah. like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You've kind of hit the wall going all Greg Adams and, you know. Well, you're trying to bang this guy. You screwed your brother. Right. You, you, yeah, you, so, you, you did away with me. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, I'm yeah. just telling, this is where he sure. needed a Kevin Samuels. The, Tom, I was at Tom. They all hit the wall. I mean, anyway, never mind. I... I will say this. I thought one of the most powerful scenes where Kendall really looked good going back a week and you finally saw it, the eulogy of his father. No, right. That's he actually he looked a like a leader. He, he had a solid like month, a but then he starts getting that God complex and start falling apart. Remember when the assistant wanted to say, hey, well, I can in that same episode. Um, I want to quit. And he yeah. couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't, couldn't deal with that. it. He's not. You got to learn how to handle the drama. And got to learn how to ha handle monkey wrenches when they're thrown at you. Anybody can lead when things are going great. Yeah. It's when the shit hits a fan. It's adversity. That's when you know who the real leader is. So are. Jason Whitlock and I had a debate on this on Fury. Why didn't he like it? Uh, well, that's my question. Do you think this makes the Mount Rushmore of HBO shows? Does it make top 10? Dramas, yes. Because Dra wow. you can't, you gotta, yeah. you got to. Yeah, it makes the Mount Rushmore of dramas. For me, it does, absolutely. No, for me, no, it, but you got to separate dramas because how can you compare a Curb Your Enthusiasm? No, I like, know. So you got to separate dra for dramas, an hour yes. drama, yes. Yeah, for drama, I told you, Sopranos. Okay. In no particular order, Sopranos, Succession, um, The Wire. He loves The Wire, Whitlock. And Lock. then The Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Interesting. You know I, what I mean? And then you go comedies and you got Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, well, we're talking about cities. serious people. Remember yeah, that. Our day. Curb Your Enthusiasm is a fantastic show. And by the way, Logan Roy is on the Mount Rushmore of all time HBO characters. That little, for that me. little scene when they started getting emotional. No, oh, that was pretty yeah, interesting. Roman was. This, yeah, but it, it, it was like bravo with the ending. It was a perfect ending because one of the kids, uh, they didn't deserve it. I agree. By the way, we should be feeling sorry for any billionaires. Yeah. They're all billionaires, and we're all. I'm like, how did it get me to sympathize yeah. with these crying billionaires? That was the weirdest <laughs> thing. Uh, Mario, you went to. Uh, LeBron James is, is was that his final Laker game? Isn't he gonna retire now? I'm so sick of hearing this, dude. So I went to the game, game four. four where Denver swept the uh, Lakers, and I don't claim to know much about basketball, but I'll tell you what, that big ass white boy they got at Denver, Jokic, that dude is bad. He's like magic. Came like he's one of those dudes like you see at. LA Fitness, who doesn't really try, but somehow he's yeah, <laughs> sinking yeah, everything because yeah. he's built like a bag of milk. Him and Tyson Fury must have the yeah, same turn. Yeah. But dishing like that, my guy's hitting fadeaway three point that shots. That shot over Davis was insane. Dude, he had a triple double at the start of the third period and he was having yeah. a, like a slow game. I'm like, that fool is incredible. That was the best player on the floor. Dare I say, best player uh, that I've seen in the league in a while. Should he have won his third straight MVP? I think he's making a case for a recount. I think count. so, right? I was like, whoa, I don't know about basketball. That fool's good. And it's so, and it's someone assuming you look at him, looks like he's never done a push up in his life. Well, man, the the passes, the no look passes are incredible. Dr taking it up the court like a point guard. Yeah. And just hitting the top. I was like, wow, that was very impressive. Mari, do see. you, here's the thing. I, I am a late. LeBron, oh, no, I'm sorry. So to go to LeBron, look, here's the thing about LeBron you got to respect his skill set and his longevity for this long. 
but he he just doesn't seem to have that dog in him like MJ uh, or Colby yeah. does. Because when I saw him starting to get a little tired, and anytime he was going to the hole, he was scoring. But then when he started dishing like Schroeder, I'm like, huh? With like 18 seconds left, you're doing that? So I was like, ah, Jordan. Mario, that, that last play, I don't think it's a lack of dog. That that last play where he got kind of tied up by Murray. That has to be a two dribble pull up fadeaway. Yeah, but and Jordan and Kobe and exactly. were point. great at the skill level exactly. is not quite there in the mid range. But here's my question to you: I'm a Laker fan in recess. When LeBron leaves, I'll be a Laker fan again. Cold as ice. So here's my question: the mood of the fans there have they had it with LeBron? No, look, that game everybody was hyped because we're trying to not get swept, right? But oh man, it got sullen and somber real quick towards the end. I if he starts like making demands where other people might take pay cuts or we have to draft a son or this and that, then I think they have over it. But again, we started out 2-10 and 10 in the beginning of the season. And to yeah, end with the, the position, team that LeBron put together, by the way. I know. That's on him. Correct. But nevertheless, we ended up giving... The dude like lives in the finals. But I just noticed that at that particular game, I felt like Jordan and Kobe would have taken more upon themselves. With all that said, dude, I kind of like... I think the, the Nuggets over They're going to win it. Don't you think? Five or six. Yeah, I like him over the over See, the heat. See, my view is this. If you look at the LeBron run in L.A., first year they didn't make the playoffs. Second year's a bubble championship. I don't know if you want to put an asterisk by that or not. No, win's a win. The same four teams that were in the, the playoffs this year, there were the same four that were there. And the other two years, one year they got bounced, and this year they went to the Western Conference Finals. So if the Laker run for James ended right now on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give that run? How many years? Four. Oh, you got to give you won a title. You got you got to give him an A. Really? If you win a title, you tell anybody else, Kim. Huh. Uh, you get four years. Even like when you won a title, even a bubble title. Forget the bubble title. All the four teams. I don't like people say that. Like when the Dodgers, everybody had the same opportunity. They had the same opportunity. They could have won. Oh, no wonder why you like bubble titles. This, okay. Hey, <laughs> did they not have the same opportunity? Are you are you aware of something? Eh, I'm not? It's a little different. No, but. it's not. They had the same opportunity. They could have won. Same number of games were played. So you tell me, hey. You win me one championship in four years. I'm taking that all day. You know you would too. No, but you know what? That does speak to how high of a standard we have for LeBron. And I actually think LeBron is point. one of the top five players. I know certain people don't. I actually think his overall floor game is incredible. But if the Laker run ended right now, even though you give it an A, I would feel like it was a little bit unfulfilling. But Only because you're grading him on a curve. Right. But the good news is, if he did leave, I could go back to being a Laker fan. So, Mario, how was your Mexican vacation? How was that? Well, it's it like it beat the hell out of you, I'll be honest was, with you. Man, well, I went with my three kids, my sister and her four kids. So that's seven kids running around. And, and you know, those are the ones you need vacations yeah. from. But, man, I love going uh, down there in Punta Mita. It's fun. And your son, I'm surfing and playing pickleball. You're drinking tequila all day. And smoking cigars it's it, it's a good time but i'm a little beat i'm a little beat up today and uh and uh it, it was a lot of fun good family bonding all Perfect. right we'll have a lot to talk about next week on the three knockdown rule on ufc fight pass one last reminder if you want to sponsor our show send us an email info at box bid so on behalf of mario lopez this is steve kim saying goodbye everybody